Let's take a look at the unique constraint. The unique constraint is used to prevent a column from having two or more identical records. Imagine you work for a company and your name is John Smith. Now, it is very possible that within the same company, there are multiple people that have the same first and last name. Some names are just common, you know, a name like John, for instance, is quite common, and Smith is, a, is another common last name. Now, some companies do create a work email for the employees. I, I know not all, this is not the case with all, all business or all organization, but, you know, depending on where you work, they might create a work email for you. And usually the email is the first and the last name at the name of the business. So for instance, it will be a, a John Smith at mybusiness.com. Now we have an employee one whose name is John Smith. We have employee two, we still be Logan, which is fine. But then we have another employee was, which is John Smith. How do we ensure that when we are creating internally an email for our employees that two people don't have the same email because if that does happen then it's a disaster because when we send an email to a john smith at mybusiness.com which of the john is getting that email is it employee one or employee three we don't know so we we have to on the back end enforce a constraint such that when we generate emails for employees we don't have two people having the same email it's the same thing when you when you try to create a new email account and you go to maybe Gmail or Yahoo and on the on the sign up page you put in a name your first name your last name and then you select an email that you want to use and and sometimes you get a an, an error message saying that email has been taken you have to choose another email behind the scene what's been enforced as a as a unique constraint to ensure that a particular column doesn't have re identical records for two or more people. Let's go over to SQL Server and see what this look like. Are we at this when we create a schema of our table? And I, I don't know, unique constraint. Okay, so first I will create a table without the constraint, without the constraint, add some data into it, just so you have a, a, a clearer picture of what I'm talking about. So let's create a create a table and we'll call the table employee. And we would like to have the the name. Let's say let's say we want an employee ID. Employee ID, and that will be an int. And we want uh, an employee name, we want the first name, make that var car. We want the last name, make that var car. I would like to have the email of the employee, Varkar, and we'll make that 50 as well. So this will be the schema. And let's let's actually add the not null. We want to enforce to make sure that we have the first name, we have the last name as well. And we want to enforce the same thing with the email because we want all of our employees to have an email. So we're gonna run this, okay. So let's insert some records onto a table. So we have insert into employee. What would we want to insert? I'd like to have the employee ID. Now, by the way, you might have noticed that sometimes when you're writing to your queries and you maybe 
just right right now you're trying to enter in uh, the name of a column so first name you sometimes sometimes get a suggestion it's almost like predicting you know what you're trying to type this is called sql intellisense and all you need to do is you can just use your keyboard to you know to move down to exactly the the name of the column or whatever suggestion that reflects what you're trying to do and then use the tab key on your you can either use the tab key or enter key to accept that value okay and then you have last name and then we have the email as well Okay, so the values would be, let's say the employee ID will be 1001. And we'll say our first name is Sam. Let's say the first name is Sam. And the last name is Sam, help me. Um, Sam Johnson, maybe. And the uh, email would be Sam Jensen at my business.com. Then that's that. And let's add another record. Just going to copy that. And we'll change this to, let's make this one or two, one zero zero two and the staff would be to Tanaker 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 whew, um Towson okay. then we change the email to Tanika Towson at mybusiness.com. So we have two records and we can just execute both. Now let's try and insert another record and we'll make this 1003 to represent the third employee. But our third employee's name is also Sam Johnson. And just to buttress the, the point I was trying to make earlier on, but the way we with the way the schema is designed, it is possible to insert another record into our database. If we execute this, we can see that we have our three employees, Sam Jensen, employee ID 1001, and his email is Sam Jensen at mybusiness.com. We have Tanika, which is fine, Tanika Towson at business.com, but we have a third employee, employee ID 1003, and yes, it's the same name, but these are two different employees, but because we don't have any constraints, now we have the error as a card that, you know, we have two people that has the same email address within our company. So how do we um, enforce the unique constraints such that, in this the the email column is unique to each of our, our employee so to do that just going to copy this because it's really the same query and what i would do is we'll just call this um, employee two that's the, the name of the table will be employee two we have the employee id we have the first name we have the last name and we have the email now to make this this column uh, unique, all we need to do is we just space and we don't have to add a, a comma, we just space and we just type unique. Um, you know, if I can spell, and that's all we need to do. And now when we create this, and now let's try and insert the same record and I'll just go here and I'll copy, um, let's see, I'll just copy, copy Sam. And now I'm just going to ch change this to employee two because this is a different table. And when I run this, it works all right. And we can confirm that by select all from employee two. Um, employee two. 
and when we select this so we have employee id first name we have sent sam johnson so now let's insert employee id 3 which is this the third employee and when we do this and we're just going to change this to table 2 and we run this now well it's going to say uh, there's a violation of a unique key constraint and let's see if scroll down and it tells us that there is a duplicate key value and that is sam johnson at mybusiness.com so now we have the unique constraint has been enforced on this column so now when we create uh, the email for the employee id 1003 which is sam johnson as well now we can make this email sam johnson one for instance and now let's try and insert and that works so if we select and print out our table so now we know that these are two different people because they have a different um, employee id the same name but now we have different email um, indicating that this column is now unique